In this video, we're going to talk about the second aspect that determines the exposure of your picture, the shutter speed. The shutter speed is the time in which light falls into the camera and onto the sensor, so the time in which your picture is being exposed. The longer the shutter speed is, the more light will fall onto the sensor and the brighter your image will be, whereas the slower your shutter speed is, the less light will fall onto the sensor and the darker your picture will be. The shutter speed is measured in seconds or split seconds and usually varies between 30 seconds and 1 over 8,000 seconds. Depending on your camera, that might vary. Between each set shutter speed, the time cuts in half and therefore the amount of light also cuts in half, meaning your picture is only half as bright. Or if you go the other way around, if you choose a longer shutter speed, the amount of light will double and therefore your picture will be twice as bright. The start and end point of the exposure, or your shot, is determined by the shutter, which usually lies in front of the sensor. At the beginning of the exposure, the shutter will reveal the sensor so light can fall onto it, and at the end of the exposure, it will cover it back up. The time in which the sensor is completely revealed is the time where a picture is being exposed or being taken. Of course, this all happens much faster in real time as you just saw in the demonstration. If we choose a shutter speed of, let's say, 1 over 1000, this is so fast that you can barely see it with your eyes. Since the shutter speed determines how long your picture is being exposed, it also determines how much movement you can capture within that time frame. If you choose a very fast shutter speed, you only catch a little part of a movement and it almost looks like it's frozen in time. Whereas if you choose a longer shutter speed, you will catch more of the movement which often results in very blurry pictures. But you can also use it to your advantage if you're doing it right and capture some beautiful movement like the movement of water, for example. Since longer shutter speed capture more of a movement, you have to be careful when shooting straight out of hand, since even the tiniest movement may result in a shaky image. Therefore, when choosing longer exposure times, it might be good to use either a tripod or something else to stabilize your camera and therefore stabilize your image especially when using longer focal lengths, since they only show such a small part of the picture that a little bit of shake is noticeable way faster than when using a wider lens. There's a rule of thumb that says the shutter speed should be about one over the focal length that you're using. Meaning if you're using a 20 millimeter focal length, your image might still be crispy and sharp at one over 30, while it's already shaky at one over 15 seconds. To gain a bit more hands-on experience and apply all of the things that you just used, here's a little exercise that you can do at home. Choose something that has movement and try photographing it with different shutter speeds. In our example, we used pouring some coffee into a cup, but it can be anything from shooting water out of the tap or moving cars on the street. 